This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Hey everyone, you're listening to The Public Affair with me, Andrew G. I see someone different every episode, but do me a favor, keep it between us. Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Andrew G, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Public Affair. Now, before we continue, I definitely want to use this opportunity to thank you all again so much for all the love and support. The Public Affair is now four years old. I'm super grateful, super thankful that you guys are still rocking with me, and I'm still maintaining a tad bit relevancy in this industry. It was a little bit hard. You know, <laughs> I've been so that's what I'm talking about. I have a lot of weight on my shoulders now, carrying a lot of weight on my shoulders. I'm very tired, <laughs> but it's all good. You know what I mean? So I need to, I need one of you bitches to step up your game and let's, <laughs> you know, take the throne. But <laughs> I also want to thank Rogue Media Network for all the love and support and uh, everything that you guys do for me. Thank you guys again so much. Uh, before we continue, my very, very special guest who I'm so excited to interview, I definitely want to use this opportunity to give a shout out just to be more of our sponsors of this episode of The Public Affair. This episode is brought to us by David Sandabanez with Alinea Real Estate. He is the number one sales agent at his office right he's gonna help you buy a home or sell your property if you guys don't know how to buy a house if you don't know the first step in doing so just get call my boy david santabanez he's gonna walk you through every single process step by step that way and make sure you're involved in every process as well because you know sometimes people are not doing that so that last point you'll make sure you guys follow him on facebook at david with linear call the number on the screen david thank you so much for all the love and support i truly appreciate it of course to my girl, oh, this is giving dinner. Anika Armstrong with Armstrong's Bayou Cafe and Bayou's Pobo. Isn't it amazing? Awesome. Isn't it delicious? They are it's awesome. a, the, every single entree that she has there is just bursting with flavor. Every sure. single pasta is my favorite. And she put me on Po Boys. And I just want to roll around in Po Boys all the time now. <laughs> I do. And they're so amazing. Make sure you guys go over there for the most authentic Cajun cuisine with a wide selection of Po Boys, crab cakes, pasta, seafood, and so much more. Check them out at Union Hall and at Union Grove. Follow Armstrong's Bayou Cafe Corporation. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the public affair of course my boy manny grew at blue star rv services listen he's a mobile rv tech who can fix all rvs and food trucks as well as in it's summertime i'm not trying to go up to your food truck and you can't t- you're telling me i can't eat because the ac is not working something's not working call manny grew at blue star rv services let them come out there and fix something all right I- i'm hungry i'm hungry it's giving hungry okay and he deals with the warranty company so you guys don't have to deal with that either if it's under manufacturer warranty give them a call to help you save some money all right they're professional they're reliable and they come straight to you and of course i know them rvs be breaking down. I just know that they do. I know that they, as soon as you pull them off the lot, they break. Call Blue Star RV Services. is going to get you taken care of. Manny Guerrero, thank you so much for all the love and support. Of course, to my boy, Jeffrey Morreal with Boyo Box and Audio. I love saying his last name with the uh, home for all your LED needs and auto accessories, <laughs> insulation, and stereos, door speakers, and audio systems. He also specializes in building all those custom software enclosures. He said he was going to put boom bass in my car. Boom like, like whatever it's called. You know, with that, South, that South Waco stuff that y'all be using. You bang. know what I mean? Yeah, that, you know, the bass that bang. Yeah, bang. bang. There you go. So that way all my Ariana Grande and Little Mix songs can be banging <laughs> at South Terrace. All right. And if you guys, um, you, I'm telling you guys, get tints with Boyo Box and Audio. It's giving summertime right now and the tent is really going to help out boyo box and audio thank you so much for all you do for me make sure you guys give him a call with the number on the screen and book your appointment now and for a free estimate and of course i can't go on without thanking soko soccer academy with dominic gutierrez and ariana gutierrez they offer team small group and individual skills training and they also have the best in child care with now soko kids make sure you guys head over there oh, and also give them a call for um open play Occasionally on Mondays and Wednesdays, and they also have elite skills training with professionals like George De Leon. I also want to give a huge shout out to the Soco soccer teams coached by my bro, Coach Mauro Maldonado. Keep doing your thing. Uh, he coaches three teams. Three teams. They're all phenomenal. Every single one of them are phenomenal. Uh, all the kids, congratulations to you and everything that you guys are doing. Com- everything so soccer academy <laughs> right with you guys all right guys i'm super excited to have this next guest onto the show now again i've been sitting on having inviting this guy onto the show for quite a while i was really happy that you agreed to come on because sometimes i feel like i'm too much it's a blessed to be here blessed no, I'm, be here, no th- thank you so much no i really appreciate that i don't sure. appreciate that you didn't bring me no starbucks though i bet man. No, I, so you know we're gonna have to square up well, when you was messaging me you was talking about alcohol so i, I didn't know I if was. you had shots to put in it so, oh yeah. i see i didn't i told you i was running late i'm sorry <laughs> okay but you were, you were giving that you don't drink because you work out a lot i don't but you do i do okay but i don't mm. want to drink if you're not because that's, that's not gonna, oh. yeah, it's not gonna, yeah. Listen, you guys, as you guys can hear him by that deep masculine voice, I've got uh, the Texas car plug here. Jeff Davis is on yes, the sir. public affair. How you doing, bro? I'm blessed. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you again for coming again. I haven't for had sure. a, a car salesman since the People's Champ. When I had I the don't. People's Champ on here, it was, we got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> we got in a lot of trouble. I'm not with People's Champ. <laughs> yeah, do, do you guys know each other? So mm-hmm. we do. Um, oh. Chad, Chad is great people, man. Yeah. He really is. We uh, we finally started communicating here few months well i guess about okay. a couple of months ago sure sure um but he's got to stay off my my android phone man he, he 
<laughs> he called me from the Bahamas ragging on my Android. I, like, I said, bro, I, was, I got both, man. Stop this. Okay, tell me he's worried about the wrong thing in the Bahamas. Exactly. I, I want to be Chad sometimes. I, I call him people's champ. I want to be him so bad sometimes. He wears the Christian Louboutins. Okay, yes, he's always splashy. Good. Right? Yep. In the middle of some ocean somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) No, but, you know, big ups to him. And, you know, again, he's been doing his thing. And so I was like, oh, I got to get into the car salesman. You work at University uh, Kia. Yes, sir. Where I just bought my car from last year. Right on. Already need new tires. (laughs) Just in a new car. I drive a shit ton. No. (laughs) And let's give a shout out to your coworker, Fernando Contreras, who just will not come on the public affair. (laughs) He just had a baby, so he's probably busy. He did, but he's he's been booked and busy for a year now. And I know, you know. He's not that busy, though. Uh, yeah, tell he him. Needs, he got to get on here. Tell him to bring his bitch house, okay? Right on, right <laughs> no, on. No, big, big ups to him. He gave me a really good deal on the car. I, you know, he's a phenomenal salesman. But, you know, we we actually met. We always met in passing at Train Waco. Yes, sir. And we always worked at, we're the, we're the five in the morning crew. Yep. Right? Yep. I, have, sure. I have to reactivate my membership. But I always saw you there. and I, You were always doing your thing, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah, what, why why start working out? Why, why is it so important for you? Because, you know, a lot of salesmen, they're just real big and grubby. You know what I mean? Just very slouchy. You know, you don't right like on. that. No, I, I mean, I was. Okay. I definitely was. So, um, like I say, I've been selling vehicles now three, about three and a half, four sure, years. Sure, sure. Before that, I was a truck driver for 20 years. So, oh, I, okay. was, I was literally 320 pounds. Uh, got to where I could walk to the, the distance of the car lot yeah. to the detail or something, I'd be out of breath. Oh, wow. Was that um, bad? Oh, it was horrible. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, knees would always hurt me and stuff sure. like that. So, I was like. Were you, like, I mean, big? Like. I felt I was sloppy, like but I'm lines. always my okay. my own worst critic. Like sure. me today, I still don't feel like I'm I'm where I want to be. Sure. Same. I'm not happy. Everybody tells me how good I look, and I still feel like I'm a fat ass. Exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, People always compliment you. I'm like, thanks, yeah, but yeah. I mean, I feel like you're just being nice, <laughs> sure. which I appreciate. But yeah, definitely. I'm still not where I want to be, <laughs> for sure. Well, well, it's good to be your own worst critic. I think in anything, you working to. out, your your you know employment and all that jazz. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So listen, but you know, uh, people are probably watching this like Andrew. Who's this guy with the blue eyes, right? On your show, are they blue or are they gray? What am I giving? My eyes change colors. They so change they go colors. of green, brown, gray. <laughs> They, they literally change. I think it's so weird when people say that. Huh? No, they really <laughs> they do. Really do change. Me and my daughter's the same way. Oh, okay. Same. Gorgeous yes. daughter, by the way. When Thank I was you. Doing, yes, with your gorgeous family. Um, you. Just can you tell us a little bit about who you are growing? What was life for you like growing up and such? So I had two excellent parents. Grew up in the country. Uh, mm-hmm. I was born, of course, here in Waco. Grew sure. up in Hillsboro, Texas. My parents moved there when I was a baby. I, don't, I'm, mm-hmm. I guess I was like two, three years old. Yeah. Uh, mom retired from Southwestern Bell Telephone Company. Dad retired from uh, Campbell Soup. We had uh, we lived the country life. Sure. So by the age of five, six years old, we're out fishing, hunting. Okay. Um, if you killed a deer, you had to gut your own deer. Oh, was I that mean, did you did you do that a lot? Oh yeah. yeah? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I don't know about the country life because I'm from New York. So you know. yeah, it's a completely different lifestyle. <laughs> it, it I was at the is. beach and stuff. You know. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I mean, my parents loved fishing, so we was always going fishing. Okay, got uh, you. Hauling hay in the summertime. Sure. Stuff like that. And I got three older brothers. Uh, okay. I'm the baby. I, I think I was an accident because my next brother to me is eight years older than oh, me. Wow, okay. So yeah, uh, they just made. Well, you know, living in the country is really not a lot to do. So yeah. So yeah. I, I just slipped up somehow. <laughs> That's what they way. do. Yeah. They're like, oh wait, we had a baby. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And it happened to be me. So. Yeah. Now you know what? You're, you're giving me kind of like gangster vibes, right? Where was that all coming from? Because that's not country. It's, Unless it is, and just school me. So me, I grew up, of course, Hillsboro. At my time when I was in Hillsboro, yeah. was a mixture, white and black. Oh, um, okay. But majority of who I hung with mm. was the black side. We called yeah. it South Side Sycamore. Yeah. You had uh, DJ Precise on here not long ago. Love him. Man, me and his little brother grew up together. Very kind. Uh, yes. Both his little brothers. Uh, so, okay. like, me and my brother next to me, back when we was growing up there, sure. we was pretty much about the only two white dudes you would see on the South Side. Oh, okay, got you. So, so like, literally, they all, we're family. Sure, like, sure. When we go to Southside, we're family. I know. Um, I just, I love how black you guys are. Like, when I say you guys, I'm talking about, like, you and the people's champ. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I love that. how black you, I love white people that are black. Like, it's just, I don't know why that's a thing for me. <laughs> I know that's weird. Is that weird? Like, it, it, it can be. It, it can you know, be, for sure. Yeah, it's it's just phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. it's Especially crazy. somebody like the people's champ, who's, like, super black. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's on a whole other level. I love sure. it. But it's, it's almost as if you guys are embraced in that, too, though. Do you know what it's I mean? It's just the way we was raised. It's, I yeah. mean, so. so it's, it's not, it's not necessarily about race it's more about um circumstances or culture not for not, sure what, is that the right term like what? culture um, um culture surroundings yes. what's the word i'm looking for um surroundings would be good because sure. who we was raised with and, yeah and yeah for the most part environment what, your there environment you there, there you go, go. Yeah. yeah definitely so <laughs> i mean because really me and my brother mm-hmm. the next one to me we're the only ones in our family that's really like that okay uh, gotcha, he don't yeah. talk like i do 
Yeah. Um, he he's he's more country. You're giving Paul Wall to me, like man. Yeah, is that a good thing? I've heard that my whole life. Yeah, you're giving Paul Wall, like yeah. like you should sing grills. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Okay, so but the family upbringing. I mean, you weren't really in a lot of trouble or nothing Never like that. Never been parents. in no trouble. Oh really? Okay. No, I, had I don't great know parents. because when I was on social media, though, it seems like you were in some trouble. Just you know, a couple years ago, we'll get into that in just a minute. Oh, but, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, looks like you like to, to definitely. Um. Anyway, so okay. Car salesman, you're doing your thing here. You're the Texas car plug, right? But I want yes, to talk sir. about early career. Now, you mentioned earlier that you were a, tuck, a truck driver. Yes, sir. Ew. Right? Why? <laughs> Man, so uh, I had two daughters. or yeah. I got two daughters. Um, so I started out working at the glass plant. I worked there for oh, yeah. some years. And My dad ate. worked there. It was a great job. Yeah, um, he worked there forever. And you had to know somebody back in the day to get okay. on there. So yeah. my grandmother worked there for 41 years. Yeesh. So she helped me get on there, and then they had a layoff. Well, yeah, I had my daughters, and they was little at the time. Sure. So working shift work, you have to have one of two things. He's a super strong woman, or you got to be real strong yeah. to work that shift work and come home and have a good, strong family with your okay, kids. Gotcha. So when I got laid off, I uh, man, I took it upon myself to go find another career. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I got to looking, and it's like, if you got a CDL, you always going to have a job. Oh, okay, yeah. I've so I went uh, to ATDS, mm-hmm. did the school, got my truck drive or my, sure. my license, and uh, just took off from there and started driving. Was that hard, though? Because, like, we drove to Vegas one time, and, you know, you mentioned about how fat you were back mm-hmm. in the day. There's nothing healthy to eat on the road. It's, it's nothing not, but Pizza Hut and McDonald's. It's horrible. I was getting the granola bars on our way to Vegas because yeah, I was it, still on my health care. Well, a lot of these trucks have yeah. refrigerators and stuff in them, so you can okay. kind of you can kind of put healthy foods in oh, them. Oh, sure. But the fact that when you are eating healthy, you still just driving all day, so it's just sitting on you regardless. Yeah, well, that. Mm-hmm. And you, I mean, you get bored, For so sure. then you just eat. You know, yeah, I mean? you going to eat, Did, lay down in the bed back there, and go to sleep out. Yeah, sure. I mean, well, so when well, you were a truck driver, you were married. At you're I've married. never been married. Oh, you, oh, I'm never sorry. been married. So you were okay. Well, single maybe or yeah. not committed. I, don't I wasn't that. committed. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I've been, I was single uh, pretty much the whole time. Yeah, uh, yeah. My baby mama was there to help the whole time. She's my sure, best sure. friend. Oh, been my best deal. friend since. Shout out to the baby's mother. Yes. Yep. Sharika. Sharika. Uh, yeah, oh, I love. See, you see, that's what I'm talking about. You're so black. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to yeah. Sharika. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I mean, and, and then plus I had a huge supporting family. So whenever sure. I was gone, whether it's my brothers, sure. my grandmother. They would help out with the kids. Wouldn't get boring though. Like I mean, sure, I'm sure it was hard on the family dynamic, right? But like, <laughs> well, see, like I, I wasn't over the road a whole lot. Oh, I made okay. sure that I kept stuff where I was more local. Yeah. If I was gone, I might be gone for two, three nights, something yeah, like definitely. that, okay. until my kids got older. And right. then I went out and started hollering the fracks in. They was in college playing softball, doing what oh, they do. I see. Okay. So I had time to be actually be away from home. I ain't have nobody here, so I could go out uh, and make my money. There you go. Okay, yeah. I mean, the money's yeah. great and everything. You couldn't make exactly. me a truck driver though because. It, it, it's a different life. I do different things when I'm bored. And so, <laughs> the whole country would know who I am. Right? <laughs> so, did it ever get like that? It, it, I don't mean to be, be too personal. Get but, like I mean, what? Well, you Explain. know, like a little little gamey. You know what I mean? Like you're on the road by yourself, and you know we have you see some wild things. I know there. that. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I know that's inappropate, guys. I'm sorry, but I'm just curious. No, no, you, yeah, it, okay. it's cool. You, you definitely. I mean, because everybody knows you're a truck driver. You got on the road. You got your lot lizards and all that. But man, Is that's that what they're called. It, that's what they call. Yeah, it, I mean, <laughs> Wait, it's hold nasty. On, did they sit at the truck stops? Like, no, it's yeah. me. I've never. So heard of that. at the okay. truck stops, of course, yeah. all the trucks park in the back. Okay, and so you don't see it as much nowadays because the the, the cops and laws they kind of patrol them. Sure. But back in the day, you would see a female jump out of one truck, knock on the door to the next truck. What, like asking, like, hey, you know? Yeah, like, you, yeah, you want some services. Did that ever happen for you? Yeah, it oh, did. Oh, okay. It, it, not, no. I oh, you said no. Okay, no. Nah, because you don't know what's out there. You have to be careful. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't know where your mouth's been. It's tempting because some of them didn't have teeth, so hey, you know. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm playing. Well, I have a full but... mouth of teeth. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I can test that. Okay, so, so anyway, you do the, the truck thing, right? So you were yeah. that for 20-something years, which you don't look a day over my age. I'll be, I'm 33. Well, I appreciate it. I wish yeah. I was 33. How, how old are you? Man, I'm 47. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I hope I'm, I look like you when I'm 47. Yeah, Damn, it, okay? Not a wrinkle on. So so we do the truck driving right but, mm-hmm. now, but now you're in car sales okay right and yeah. i want to get right into that you became the texas car plug and i and i uh, can we still use that or? yeah for sure that's yeah. just the name i gave myself that, uh, that's just your thing right. and so um why the transition how the transit well, salesman truck driver they don't not yeah. at all and, and okay. so while i was out truck driving i had a incident where uh lost vision and thing and mm. so they did a lot of tests and come to find out I had to have double disc neck surgery. It was pinching the blood vessels going to my eyes, Eesh. messing up vision and all that. Eesh. So I go in and have the double disc neck surgery, and I was going to be out for, like, I think it was eight or nine weeks. Oh, wow. So while I'm out, 
a real good friend of mine. Hey, God bless him, because, man, without him, I wouldn't be where I'm at. But yeah. Marcus Ward, you need to get him on here. Oh, okay. he, he's awesome, Shout man. out to Marcus. Uh, he yeah. was a sales manager at Chevy West at the time. Ah, gotcha. And so I kept, like, he, he would post where he was looking for salesmen. So yeah. I kept blowing him up. Bro, give me a chance. Give me a chance. Okay. So I've always been the type, even when I play football, man, just put me in the game. Let me shine. Sure, sure. So finally, Marcus went to the manager out there, and uh, Mr. Leo Pacheco. Uh-huh. Loved that man to death. Uh, Marcus went out there, talked to him. They gave me a chance. Sure. So I came in my first month as a trainee. Okay. I sold 21 cars. Oh. And so I sold everyone in the dealership. Yeah. So from there, it just completely blew up. I was no one there ever beat me for like three years. Sure, sure. Um, it was a true blessing financially. Right. I finally found my way in life, like what okay. I enjoy doing. That's what you selling yeah. cars. I, I love helping and people. You weren't out all kinds of hours. It was like a right a schedule. Yeah, and, yeah. Because okay, gotcha. I mean, people think truck drivers make a lot of money. They really don't. Yeah, they don't. So this right here was able for me to start financially helping my kids, yeah. myself more. Yeah, and then not only me, I. I got a huge heart, so I help a lot in the community. Oh, I sure. sponsor the Southern Panthers. Shout um, out to them. Kids, any, anything to do with kids, I'm going to help. Somebody yeah. comes to me, hey, can you help my kid? I oh, can't turn sweet. a kid down, yeah. so I love I love helping kids. That's what's up. Man. Um, but from there, I mean, Mark's Ward gave me my chance out there, and uh, he ended up moving on to Mike Terry in Hillsboro, sure. and I stayed behind at Chevy West, and it, it was a huge blessing. I have a good question for you. Why mm-hmm. do you think that you weren't given a chance? Why, why do you think that you were slept on for such a minute? As far as what? Well, the, car sales? as far as being a car salesman. Like, I never yeah. approached it. Oh, okay. I, I, Like, for me, like, so when Marcus, when Mar- me and Marcus talked, I was like, because I never knew what, financially, what they made. I didn't yeah. know what car salesmen well, it's made. it's very fickle, too. It's very yeah, up and down. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So uh, he, he asked me, he was like, bro, what do you need to make a month? I was like, man, I got two girls going to college. Right. I need to bring home at least 6000 a month, sure. at least. And he started laughing. He's like, bro, get over here, man. Get over uh-huh. here and give it a chance. So I went over there, and, man, it was the biggest blessing Oh, wow. Ever. So it was like that. It was What huge. are we doing? Why are we not all salesmen? I've been told <laughs> I'd be a really good salesman. You know, I did radio sales you for would a whole... be. You're good at talking to people. No, so I, I, I can't stand it. I did radio sales for three months. When I was on the radio, you know, I was on the radio. Right, right, this. right. And then I, did, I dabbled in the sales part. And it, like, it wasn't for it. you. I mean, I got my sale by sleeping. Like, it was like, it was just gotcha. <laughs> allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look like, unconventional okay. to me. I'm very impatient. Okay? <laughs> right. I hate that yeah, people say that, though. I would be a really good salesman. Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm out. Yeah, can't do it. Um, you know, so, okay. So, as far as learning the business, though, because sales, again, it can be up and down, right? Definitely. Uh, how did you maneuver your way by becoming excellent at it? But also outsmarting the competition because sales is a very competitive business. It is huge. Yes. Very, very competitive. So what I did, I have a, I'm blessed to have a huge following on Facebook. Okay. And Marcus always told me, Jeff, post your stuff on Facebook. Sure, post sure. them, post them, post them. So every time I make a sale, I'm posting just as I do today. Nothing's changed. I've always been a believer that what got you there, you stick with. Yeah. Um, so whenever I would sell a vehicle, I'd ask that person, hey, can I friend you on Facebook? Oh, okay. And they say, yeah. And I'd friend them on Facebook, tag them, and be like, hey, can you can you uh, share my post? Sure. And have people come see me. Then it becomes word of mouth. Man, it just yeah. became like a big sure, rolling ball sure. for me. I mean, it, it, it took off big time. Sure. But did you ever endure anybody that maybe, you know, it, people can become a little bit envious. All the of time. The success. Yeah, you know what I mean? And so yeah. how were you able to plow through that? Because that can be very discouraging as well. Man, it, it, it happened a lot. And so yeah. I hate to keep bringing him up, but Marcus, man, I, I'd call Marcus <laughs> for any that, advice. That's your, that's your dude. That's my boy, man. Yeah. So I'd call him for any advice. And uh, we'd get talking. And, of course, going back to Chad, uh, mm-hmm. at the time when I blew up, i say about six, eight months into my sure. I was hot all over the state of Texas. Yeah. I had people coming from everywhere to buy. Oh, wow. And, of course, Chad, I didn't know Chad at the time. Didn't okay. know nothing about him. Sure. And, and the people probably think, oh, man, everybody knows Chad. I'm from Waco, but I wasn't in the streets in Waco I like got Chad. You. I, I, got I you, don't yeah. know Chad like that. Yeah. So uh, it got to where people was like, oh, you you trying to be like Chad. You just Chad, oh, this, comparison. that, and the other. Yeah, but um, then they would start, like, literally, it's almost like you had two goats at the top of the game. Sure. And they want to see y'all battle. Oh, wow. So people would start going and telling Chad, oh, okay. Jeff said this, Jeff said that. But them same people coming to me. Yeah. Saying, oh, Chad's saying this about Ooh. you, Chad's saying that. So I messaged Chad one day, yeah. bro, look, I ain't got no animosity towards you. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you doing your thing. You selling more cars than anybody in Central Texas. Yeah. Why would I hate on you? Sure, sure. So he finally messaged me back. We squashed everything. Now we'll text yeah. each other, talk to each other, whatever. So it, it kind of and like jarred up an unnecessary beef. It did. And then once yeah. you get that out the way yeah. and you realize, like Marcus would always tell me, Jeff, there's enough 
there's enough money out here for everybody to eat. Yeah. You don't have to worry about what the next person's doing, and they don't need to worry about what God, you're doing. I hate that for you. It's it, it but it, <laughs> hey, it, it but like happened, adversity but, makes you stronger. But it does. But people be so weird. Like I've had that happen in my business too. You know what I mean? Where I've had to yeah. message people like, okay, so you know, it's like nothing, right? right. <laughs> like yeah. like what, what, I don't know why this is a thing. You know exactly. what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. so crazy. Did you but feel it, like that was annoying that people did that? It was very annoying. But as mm -hmm. an adult. If you finally just be like, you know what, screw this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reach out to this person as yeah. a man and, and, you know, open this up. And finally, that's what I did. And, man, mm -hmm. me and Chad still ain't just sat down and talk. We ain't seen each other in person except yeah. for my, at my nephew's uh, birthday party. Yeah. But, man, I guarantee you me and Chad could go to a bar, sit and drink, oh, shoot yeah. the shit. And I would love to see cool. you guys in the same room together. It would be. Man, Marcus yeah. Ward posted a thing the other day. Sure. What would be the dream team of car salesmen? And I flat out said, man, you put Marcus Ward, Chad Kowit, and myself in a, in a building. Yeah. Nobody in Central Texas is going to have a, stand, a chance but with can us. can you please throw Fernando Contreras in there? Because he did sell my car. <laughs> you got to have that Spanish <laughs> yeah, speaker for yeah, sure. Okay, and he's, he's, he's great. You know, I'm, I'm, put, I'm plugging you in, all right, with the dream team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. He, he, yeah. He, you know. I got you. Did, you. did you ever find that your stature or your, your appearance was um, compromising to you as a salesman? Do you think that people didn't take you, maybe didn't take you serious at first just because you looked the way you look? I asked Chad a similar question. Right. Yeah. And so, of course, Chad's been in it for years. Right. I'm just now coming up on four years. So when I first started sailing out there, Marcus told me, bro, you need to put on basketball sleeves to cover your tats. Yes. Okay. Um, and so I did that. And so I'm like, man, look, it, I did it for like a few months. And finally, I was like, man, people can't accept me for me. Yeah. It's not meant to be. Sure. So I started taking them off. And at the time, I was selling 40, 50 cars a month. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Leo Pacheco, the owner out there, man, Mr. Leo was always drilling me, always yeah. over my back. I thought he was wanting to fire me. But uh, finally, he never said nothing about my tattoos, yeah. never said nothing about me not wearing the sleeves or nothing. Okay. But, like, nowadays, your appearance, I mean – you, you're supposed to be able to open yourself up to people. Sure, I think so. So I think that makes a good salesman. Definitely. I, th I think that when you – when you, because people – I think people know when you're, like, being a gimmick. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think For people sure. know when you're pulling the wool over their eyes. Definitely. And that's like even when you I – got to be genuine with people. Well, exactly. You know what I mean? And so do you think that some people, maybe that's how they fail in that side of the business is that they, they try too hard to be something that they're not? <sighs> Man, I can't really speak on other people because everybody's got their own way in life. But, like – I, I just think that maybe if, if they didn't succeed in car sales, it's just not for them. Yeah, I got you. I mean, whatever they, they – maybe they're supposed to be at McDonald's working at Walmart. Yeah, don't do that 20-piece hit yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that 20-piece hit, but they only gave me one barbecue. But, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but as far as your first sale went, though, right, mm -hmm. I mean, how was, what was that like for Man, you? Man, it was because, crazy because, yeah. like, at Chevy West, I didn't get no training. No training whatsoever. They, they don't they, really train you, though, right? How do you train somebody? University Mazda Kia, they do. Oh, they do? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. They are, man, over here, they're great. It'd be like, if they did hire newbies, mm -hmm. it's a great first place to start because they do do training. So at Chevy West, Mr. Leo is real big on you making phone calls to get people in the store. Okay. So they would put what's called a manifest list in front of you. And your job was literally to call people in, off this list all day long and just try to get them to come into the store. Oh, wow. Not knowing... We had 10 salesmen in there. Everybody's calling the same list. We call the exact same people blowing them up. They get tired. Sometimes people answer the phone cussing you out. Man, y'all yeah, leave me like, alone. Leave me alone, man. So uh, it, it's finally I, I just found my own way. Like I sure. had some some people, Billy Martin and some of the older crew, that kind of helped me with paperwork. Mm -hmm. But once I got the paperwork now, it, it, was, it was I just smooth. took over from there. Yeah. It was smooth. But listen, you know what, um, Jeff? I have so many. I want to ask like so many awesome questions about like some of the shit that goes on behind the scenes in sales. I'm sure you've dealt with a lot of different kinds of people that may have tried to do a lot of different kinds of things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, we're going to get more into that. So when we get back, we're going to have more with Jeff, the Texas car plug and how he gets all of us with our shitty credit approved for cars, all these people that he's dealing with behind the scenes and some people that he may have had a scuffle with once or twice. So we're going to get right back into it here on the public affair. Make sure you guys stay tuned. Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of The Public Affair. My very special guest, the Texas car plug, Mr. Jeff Davis, is in the building. Now, before we continue, I definitely want to use this opportunity to give a shout-out to just a few more of our sponsors of this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, I want to give a shout-out to my boy, Julian, and my girl, Anna Banda, with Banda's Hauling Service. They rent dump trailers. You fill it up, and they haul it away. They also do junk removes. They do remove tree brush. Um, they haul cars in and out of town. So if Jeff sells you a car and it breaks down and you need a tow, hit up my boy, Banda's Hauling Service. He's got you. He, does, he tows cars. He towed my car once. Uh, he's also offering roll-off dumpster services as well. I know you guys like to have those big giant parties. I know that you guys have trash all over the place. Just run a dumpster. Run a dumpster with Banda's Hauling <laughs> Service. He'll come pick it up tomorrow, all right? Call it out with the number on the screen. Julian Anabanda, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, to my boy, Osier Penguin Benitez with Fun Town RV. The best in RV sales. That's right. Penguin is working overtime to make sure, listen, it's giving camping season. He wants to make sure he gives you the best deal in any RV. I'm talking about travel trailers, fifth wheels, toy hauling. He's so much more. All right, my boy is going to get you in the best deal, best RV, and everything's going to be working. All right, so <laughs> make sure you guys hit my boy, Osier Penguin Benitez with the number on the screen. Follow Penguin's cool RV deal and tips on Facebook. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, my girl, Myra Rosales with Strike a Pose Photography, a digital photo booth business, perfect for parties, private events, corporate events, and so much more. It's fun. It's convenient. It's easy. She's also offering digital customized invites. She's offering um, sports photography. Basically, all your photography stuff, you got to hit up my girl, Myra Rosales. She's definitely coming up in the business. I'm so proud of her. Call now and book now with the number on the screen, Strike a Pose Photography. Photography. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. And of course, to my boy Jesus Sanchez with Brothers Roofing and Remodeling from Mart, Texas, a small construction business from Mart, specializing in general roofing needs and so much more. Protect your home from the crazy elements of the Texas. It's been giving storms like the last three weeks. I mean, not this week, as it's but, but you know. <laughs> You got to make sure yeah, that the yeah. house is in tip-top shape, right? Call my boy, Brothers Roofing and Remodeling. He's going to come make sure everything is okay. And if you guys need a remodel, he's got you as well. And make sure you guys hit him up for all your financing options as well. He's going to help you save some money. You know what I mean? Brothers Roofing and Remodeling. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. All right, guys, I've got my very special guest, Jeff Davis. You know, Jeff, you told me you were shy when we messaged. And you're not shy. No, you're not. You've been chatty Cathy this whole time. You bring it out of me. Do so I? Make it easier Jeff called me a professional, you guys. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I want to get right into the clients. The okay. client, I know, I know that you guys deal with all kinds of people, right? Sure. And and so, has anybody ever? Okay, so we do what we can to get approved, right? Mm -hmm. When I bought my car for Fernando, my my credit was stellar. It was stellar, right? right it was right. just I, I walked in there with my chest out, and I was like, "You go back and tell them I'm paying this." Much. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> the finance yeah. manager, I can't remember his fucking name, but I just know he was annoyed with me. But <laughs> <laughs> you probably know him too. But anyway, um, does anybody ever act out of line? They do. Yeah, like when, when you tell them that they don't get it. Yeah, yeah. Tell me some stories. Please. So I what? literally just shared a post yesterday on Facebook about this. People okay. use Credit Karma for their they credit. What's and that? Credit Karma is a free app for you to check your credit, pull your credit. And so Credit Karma can't pull the accurate pull. It don't go oh. in depth. It's a free site. Oh. So people literally will say, oh, well, Credit Karma, like the the thing I shared yesterday. Okay. Credit Karma says I'm an 800, and then the car salesman comes back, baby, you're a 430. Why, why would so Credit Karma do that? It can't pull an in-depth pool, and we pull auto pool. Okay. So it, it's, it goes more on your purchases and what you've bought and stuff like that, uh, especially when it comes to vehicles and stuff like sure, that. So sure, sure. People just go about their own way, and they don't understand that Credit Karma is not the way you want to find out what your credit is. I, so, <laughs> yeah, I don't mean to sound like that way I've never heard. Yeah, and then you get so many yeah. people like also come in and, like, <laughs> well, it's allowed. It says... I don't have to put money down. Oh, uh, oh, oh, so everybody's, everybody knows the law now. Yeah, everybody's a professional, know the law. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, so what do you do at that point? At that point, <laughs> I tell them they need to go read up on the law. <laughs> it's not that there is no law. Wait, okay, so people think that they could just walk into the car lot, pay mm -hmm. zero down, or pay nothing, and, and get walk what out they with want. A car. Is that, oh, get what they want? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, I mean, that's. So I mean, can you clear the air? What's, what can you, what's. What's the nuance in that? So, I mean, depending on where your credit is at, I mean, you've had, we've had some people mm -hmm. that are kind of bad credit we'll send to the banks, but the thing is they've had very good payment schedules with their vehicles or whatnot, so the banks will kind of give them a little more lead way yeah. into the next purchase. But when you got people that's had two, three repos, these banks, they're going to make oh, okay. you pay. They're going to make you get into like a $10,000, $15,000 car. And then people think, oh, I'm, I deserve more than that. I work hard, this, that, and the other. But we understand at the end that. of the day, yeah. you got to realize, yeah, you might deserve, you think you deserve more than that. But sure. from looking at your bill payments, you don't. That's right. I always say there's two bills that you should never be late on, and that's your car note and your rent. 
Exactly. That's it. Everybody else, y'all can wait the lights, all right? right. It's July in Texas. You'll be all right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you want to pay. You. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, right. seriously. Yeah, though, seriously. You know, those are like, those are, I feel like those are the main necessities. You, you know, gotta you have, gotta have transportation. You got to have somewhere to live. Yeah. Okay, so people are walking in. So, no, can you really walk in? Because I, I, I financed two cars. I've had the 2012 Honda Civic. Now mm -hmm. I got the 23 Kia Sportage. You saw mm -hmm. it outside. Okay. Shout out to Fernando Contreras. Right. And so, no, I just want to give him a spot. But, yeah. um, and so, you know, I, I've paid, I did little down payments. Mm -hmm. I, did, I didn't just not pay nothing. Right, right. Yeah. And if your credit allows, you can put zero down. And then, like oh, you okay. said, you kind of went in there and like, I'm not paying that payment. I'm paying this payment. You kind of can. In, in, the, the dealerships want to make a sale. So sure. they're going to give you the best deal they I'm can, but gonna, they're not going to break their sales. Yeah, and Jeff, I'm not going to let you know, have a full-time job at a dealership. And so, <laughs> and so I knew how to go in there and be like, all right, now this is the part where we're going to have fun. Right, you know right, I, mean? right. I, 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 I used my, my resources, if you will. I, had, I know everybody doesn't have that. Do yeah. you ever feel like you get, because I know you deal with this. Do you ever feel like you get people that come in there and they think that they're hot shit and that they have the answers to everything and, they're, and you think they're going to straddle? Because I don't think I straddled Fernando. Right. I don't. I just told, I just knew the managers. I know what they're trying to do. You know what right, I mean? Right, 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 right. So, I, you know, do you think people try to come in and have the reins on you? You do. I mean, because yeah. you got some people that are really smart, and they come in, they know their interest rate to a T. They know, they think they know what interest rate they should be getting, <laughs> but they don't realize that nowadays interest rates are higher than they've ever been. So you might be an 800 bitcoin thinking, I'm, I'm supposed to get 2% interest or whatever. Sure. Those days are gone right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, are. you might have some Mazdas or something like that, or Kia Finance might give you a better interest rate right now mm -hmm. certain, at certain times. But Sure. You're not getting those really good interest rates like you used to. Yeah, for sure. And people just don't can't can't grasp it. That can't, since okay. uh, COVID, everything went up. Everything's just up right now. Yeah, yeah. Because even I didn't. I like I said when I came to give the car, it was stellar credit. I mean stellar. Right. And, and I was not at no two percent. I was a little bit shocked yeah. that I wasn't at two percent because when I got the twenty twelve, I was rea like, nowadays reality. It's, yeah, it's just it's what it is. So you guys go on test drives. Right? I'm sure you go on a lot of test drives, mm -hmm. right? Has any? Uh, let's let's because I, I, I know you're not gay. So uh, <laughs> so and that's fine. But uh, do, do you ever have any girls try to do extra shit just to try to get approved? Allegedly, allegedly, that get me in trouble. But no, yo, I, they they. On. I mean, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> We're not going to play that game. <laughs> I was in sales, like I said, for quite a while. I know how right. these people are. Yeah. <laughs> I know how these salesmen are. I'm not saying that's how you are. Yeah, I just know sure. how these salesmen and managers are. I'm not talking about University Kia. How bad you want this call? I what love University <laughs> Kia. I got my car from University Kia. The service department at University Kia is phenomenal. My salesman was phenomenal. Jeff is phenomenal. <laughs> but what I say here, y'all know what's popping <laughs> Anyone that's a car dealer, anyway. Yeah, so I mean, you do get some crazy experiences on them, uh, them, <laughs> <laughs> them test drives. Sure, I mean, yeah. so they want to test things, and yeah. it's not the test drive. But, okay. but you just got to be strong and be like, hey, because at the same time, it's a professional transaction. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that professional transaction can get you in a lot of trouble. They go back and say, oh, oh wait, well, no, I was talking this, about you're that. trying to keep it. I'm not trying to say yeah. that you should have done that. Yeah, no, no right. No That's means. what I'm. Yeah, I, okay. I mean, but shoot, they go back and say, well, he he did this to me. He did that to me on right, test drive. Right. Shoot, there goes your whole career. Definitely, so you gotta be smart. With you have it. to be very smart, yeah. and that's why I, wa I want you know Fernando. No, I was being very respectful, right? I, 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 I ain't right. gonna ask you how y'all's test drive was. No, I, we did. I, you want to know? We <laughs> test drove it. I, shout out to my dad. We test because university kid. My parents they live close. Uh -huh. They're close, and so I told Fernando. I, let me drive the car and let's drive it to my dad's house because it's around the corner. Is that okay? He goes, yeah. And so I pulled up and my dad, he's like a fucking hater, bro. Like, I love my dad, but he be hating. He's like, don't buy this fucking car. What are you doing? I said, like, bitch, I'm going to buy the car. I, said, I want this car. You know right, I mean? right, right, right. I did. We went back and I signed the papers. I bought the car. <laughs> hey, money. No, nah, Fernando's fucking cool people, man. I, I like he him. Is, he's great Please people. come to the show. Okay, so what is, the, what is a situation that you can recall that was like a little bit gamey? You know what I mean? As far as trying to get somebody approved to get a car. Like, maybe somebody, something, something somebody did to you or tried to do to you. Man. We just want to know the story. We're not trying to get you in trouble. We know what happened. Yeah, so. I mean, <laughs> it, it's been, like, things on test drives when the females be like, so... I do this, I do that. Can you, you think you can for sure give me approval, <laughs> baby? I'm not the bank. Okay. I can't even promise you nothing. I mean, hey, sure, but sure. no, nah, we're not doing that. Yeah, so so you just have to tell them, listen, th it's really to. not up to me. Yeah. Okay, that kind of leads me to my next point. How much is up to you? Because, like, car salesmen, like yourself, you know, you're the Texas car plug. And, you know, shout out to my boy Cutis, you know what I mean, who works at Drive Casa, I believe. Or Apple Sport, one of those. Sorry, mm -hmm. he's back and forth. And then, you know, and then we shout out to Fernando, of course, and People's Champ. Y'all are, y'all's pitch is to right. say, come see me, I'm going to put you in a car. Right, right. How much say-so do you guys have when it comes to making that decision? Being 110%. Now, Chad might have a little more because 
I'm not real for sure, but I think mm-hmm. Chad gets to actually desk his own deals and everything. Chad's oh, okay. situation is a little bit different. Sure. So with a regular car salesman like myself, the desk managers is who has all the say. So the, uh, so they're the ones that actually get to see in depth what your credit's like. They get mm-hmm. to see what you can pay, what you can buy, okay. and all that. So we really are just a middleman. So sure. my manager tells me, hey, she needs such such more down or she has to have a cosigner. That's what I come out and I oh, do. Okay, I mean, I'm you. really just a middleman. Sure, sure. So, I mean, as far as how much pull we have for the car sale, mm-hmm. it's not a lot. Do you think people grasp that? Do you think people understand that, that you are just the middleman? They don't. They don't. They don't okay. uh, because I, I'll tell you, like like me, I sell so many cars because I'm just blessed to know a lot of people. Sure. I'm blessed, like, to get a lot of referrals in. Sure. I'm genuine with people. They trust me. They know I'm going to work for them. I'm going to fight for them to get them the best deal. Right, right. And I will fight for my customers to get them the best deal. If I know you can't afford this and you tell me, with all fairness, that you can't afford this, I'm going to go to fight for you and see what kind of a deal I can get for oh, you. okay. Um, now, if the manager flat out says, hey, this is the best we, we can do on do this it, vehicle, yeah. then, hey, we got to move to a cheaper vehicle. Yeah, bro. That's just okay. what that is. So I, I wonder, what lengths do you go to to fight? Because, you know, you, you want to make everybody happy, mm-hmm. you know, as a salesman. You know what I mean? But the, you, like you said, you're just the middleman, so there's only so much that you can do. You know right. what I mean? What? How much, when you say that, you, I'll fight for you to try to get this approved. Like, what lengths do you have to go I mean, to? shoot, I'm going to keep going back and forth with my manager and say, oh, man, really? we got to find another way. Can we go to another bank? Sure, what we got to sure. do? And then at the same time, if they need a co-signer, mm-hmm. say, pull out that phone. We finna go through your whole contact list. There's somebody in this mug that loves you. Yeah, yeah. It's going to co-sign for you. Listen, there's only two people I would co-sign things for, and those are my brothers. That's it. <laughs> Nobody else asked me for shit. <laughs> don't ask me for nothing. Do not. No, I don't. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, and Susie Orman said that if you have to co-sign for somebody. Well, okay, yeah. Let me ask you this because I see that Susie Orman is some financial advisor that I follow. She does me, and so um, she says if you have to have a co, if somebody asks you to co-sign, you shouldn't do it because there's a reason why they need a co-sign. Do you think that that's a fair statement? It is. There's because mm. there's a reason. Our credit, the, our credit is the way it is because of what we do to it. Okay. Nobody else That's is in responsible for our yes. credit. So yes. if our credit is trash, it's because of what we did. Yes. Uh, now, I understand back in the days, our parents could have put us in bad situations, getting lights turned on in our names and stuff like that. Oh, not that them, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I've, I've known that that happened. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But as adults, we're responsible for our own outcome of our credit and stuff sure, like sure. that. Sure, okay, So gotcha. when we tell you you need a credit and you get mad or need a cosign and you get mad about it, you need more money down, mm-hmm. we didn't do this to you. You did this to you. Right, right. I have to say, when I got my first car, the 2012 Honda Civic, a girl did co-sign for me that I worked with. I mean, we're not friends now. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> she, she did co-sign for me, and then this one I got by myself, you know? Right, I mean? right. Which is fine. But, you know, I do you do you think when it comes to seeking a co-signer, mm-hmm. if you're to give advice to a co-signee, somebody who's co-signing, would, would you... What what um like you said you only co sign for your your brothers I'm yeah. only co signing for my daughters that's it and okay. my daughter's credit like my oldest one she handles her business so okay. she don't need to co sign no more sure, I, sure. I helped her with the first vehicle she she she's a one now mm-hmm. and my baby girl she's a little hard headed <laughs> so I mean yeah. I still co sign to help her that's my child I'm gonna I do that it. for sure so you should only do it for people that you. That you can hold accountable for what's going sure, on because if, if they're not handling their business you got to step in with them sure and like. You can't just step in and help anybody, just anybody. You, you really can't. That, oh. I got you. Okay. So, you know, was there ever a time where, you know, you were working with somebody, right? And they're just like, uh, like they weren't getting approved, not getting approved. You know what I mean? And then mm-hmm. they're just getting discouraged and they're getting sad. And then somehow or another, you made shit happen. A- and then it it worked. Yeah, for sure. Can I you mean, tell us the story? Please. The, the, the biggest thing that people do, and there's been too many stories to tell one, Sure, but they get discouraged and they're ready to up and just leave. Yeah. Instead of sitting here at this desk and finding a way, whether it's you, you might want to go to the bank. I know your credit's bad, but if you have a good re, uh, reputation with your yeah. bank, you can possibly go there and get you a personal loan sure, sure. and use that for your down payment. That or just sit here and like I said, let's go through your contacts and find you a co-signer. Somebody right. that somebody in there is going to help you. Right. And yeah. It's probably the person you least expect. Got you, got you. How about some client horror stories? Have you ever had to deal with somebody that? But yeah, <laughs> you know Man. what? Okay, I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna say it, but I'm not gonna mention names. I was doing my homework on you, right? And I mm-hmm. remember a couple years ago you made a post, right? But I did. We didn't know each other. Mm-hmm. We we didn't know either because I wasn't even going to train. I don't think two years ago. You know right. what I mean? So I just remember like, oh my God, this guy has the most going on. What the fuck? You know what I mean? Because <laughs> you, you straight up blasted somebody, right? Right. But, uh, but they also blasted you with, with respect. I mean, they, mm-hmm. they started it, right? Right. And so, you know, in a situation like that, 
And mm-hmm. and I don't know the details of the situation, so maybe you can enlighten us, right? But they yeah. basically called you out as somebody that was doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, no, no, you got to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. this girl here, she, uh, she tried to say, okay, first of all, she came in to get the vehicle. She uh, There's another one there she needed to co-sign. Okay, sure. Her mom is there with her. Mm. Why did you do that? That's not her mom? Couldn't find out. I don't think it was a real mom. Oh, see, okay. So Allegedly. Yeah. mom co-signs, and she says that she makes so much money per month oh. on Social Security and whatnot. This is a Saturday night. We close at 6. Okay. So we get her done, and uh, we let her take the vehicle. But she had to bring us back proof. Yeah. The mom had to bring us her proof of her Social Security, and then the which is called the award letter, sure, and sure. then the bank statements. So three or four days go by. I'm blowing her up, blowing her up, blowing her up. Hey, we need this. We need this. Sure. Never would bring it. Okay. And then come to find out, she texts me, and like, Jeff, my mom don't really get that. She sells narcotics in the street. Oh, oh. So how are we going to put? We can't prove this yes. income. So at this point, you got to bring the car back. Allegedly. Yeah. So <laughs> please, because I I don't need the lawyers. Anyway, so when we make yeah. her bring the car back, it's not our fault. It's your fault because y'all lied because to you us. Lied. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So when she had to bring the oh, car, so they back, had the car. Yeah, we let them I take it because she didn't have no vehicle. She had kids. Oh, so, so you made shit work. We, 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 man, as a car salesman, you try to help your people yes, out. Yes, absolutely. And so we let her take the car. Now, a lot of dealerships won't do that. Right. And justfully right. They shouldn't. Sure. But uh, we let her take the car, and then, shoot, it took us probably three weeks to get the car back. Three oh, or four wow. weeks. So you guys had to repo it. Well, or, she finally brought it back because oh, the did. car was sort of having some problems with Chevy or West. Now, did she? Cars have a lot of problems. Did she bring <laughs> Allegedly. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, when, so wait, when she brought it back, was it before or after the post? It was before. So okay. everything, she was happy. Everything was cool. Yeah, yeah. She was cordial and everything until yes. she brought the car back. So she brought so, the car back and then the post. Yes, and okay. then the post. And then at mm-hmm. the post, she tried to say that I make fake bank statements, this, that, and the other. Okay, okay. I don't do none of that. Sure. I'm not that smart. I got you. Um, I, I, I'm just honest. If I did yeah. some of that, I'd be selling 60 cars a sure, month. Sure, bro, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Other people at the dealership do. I don't do that. Uh, oh, so, uh, she, You're going to get me beat up. Nah. <laughs> no, okay. Nah. You, you'll be my bodyguard. I, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, got gotcha, you. But, know I can't fight. I'm pussy. But <laughs> I am. I'm not going to lie. I can't fight. Okay. So, she, uh, <laughs> when she made that post, like, I don't never go at nobody. Yeah. I ha- if you follow me on Facebook, I'm very outspoken. I like to have fun. Yes, and laugh, yes, cut up, and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But you won't never see me bash oh, nobody. Every time I see you, it's working out. Yeah. Every time I yeah. see the gym. I'm Every working time. out or if I yes. see something I think's funny, I'm going to post that. Right. Unless it's my kids and my grandbabies, I'm going to yes. post that. Mm-hmm. But I've never bashed nobody. I don't go at people. But if you're going to if you're gonna tarnish my character, sure. then I got to stand up for myself. If we don't stand up for ourselves, who will? So, I, okay, yes. And so many I, people after that, they was like, Jeff, you don't need to go back at her. Everybody knows how she is. So I was going to say, there's nuance to that, right? Because, mm-hmm. like, I, I say a lot of bitches have made it because of the public affair. I get, I've get, been dragged through the mud on social right. media. I, and I've had people diminish my character, demean my character, go in on me, make posts about me and everybody. Y'all love sending me those screenshots. Can you stop, please? Like, <laughs> stop. I don't want to see that. But right. <laughs> I, just, I just want to take that. So I want to ask you, because for me, I always say, okay, I can't respond because I feel like it would it would – make me look less than you know what i mean yeah. that everybody's just going to be focused on the drama and everybody's going to be do, do you think that that was helpful for you as a salesman at the time like if you look if you look back at it now would you have done things differently no no i okay. wouldn't have so, it, you, st- I so mean, you are going to respond yeah i mean yeah. if you tarnish my character i got to for i mean sure. i'm a man should so i respond when they're tarnishing my character if it's that bad, you feel like it's out of line. You got because at the end of the day, that's my business. Sure. So if you saying that I'm doing illegal stuff, and okay. and this and that, then so there no, has to be a line. There's got to be. Yeah, I got it's, you. It's, okay. it's just like fighting. I, I don't fight unless you you swing at me. Sure. Or you talk about my mama, my daddy, and my kids. Okay. Okay. It's the same thing. There, there's there's boundaries. There's lines to certain things. Mm-hmm. And when you cross that boundary, you sometimes have to step out. And I like you. I got okay. great friends. It was like Jeff. You didn't have to do that. Everybody knows you. Sure. Sure. At the end of the day, though, it's my name. Okay. And then, you know, I think it's fair to say two years later that you don't regret it. You stand on that. And I yeah. and I respect that. You know what I mean? There's times, don't get me wrong, I want to respond to you. Yeah, you know what I sure. mean? Oh, there's yeah. a psh, what? I'd have had you bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Okay. Rethinking life. But, you know, I, I always think at my, at my, like, we are entrepreneurs, right? Right, like we right. Are, we, people look up to us even though they don't, we don't, didn't think we wanted them to. You know yeah. what I mean? And I always sure. think, okay, what is somebody going to think? 
if I'm just constantly going back and forth with a bitch and we're calling each other bitches and hoes, fuck you, bitch. Yeah. Uh, you know, come to Hewitt, I'll whoop your ass. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah, you know and what I mean? People think yeah. that you drama, you have a lot of I don't, drama. I don't want that. Exactly. I don't want, I don't I don't, yeah. need them. I want yeah. people to look at me and say, hey, man, this this guy likes to have fun. Sure. And then when you see me in public and I'm, I'm, I'm going to shake your hand. I'm going to talk, cut up with you. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, that's me. I, I like to you, have I fun. I've never been one to sit here and start drama. I love I it. And, and you're not, you're very kind. I will say that. You've always been very Thank nice you. with me. Yes. So, you know, I, and you know, being a salesman amongst the salesmen, I want to mm-hmm. talk to you about, right? Some salesmen, they're not all very reputable. No, I shouldn't say reputable. Um, they're not very trustworthy. You know, some salesmen do things, you know, under the rug to kind of make things happen. Believe me, I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I, I will say a lot of salesmen, they ha- they have the reputation of being a little bit um, liars, cheaters. Um, yeah. You know, what's the word I'm looking for? Not trustworthy. I, I'm having a brain fart. How do you stay above all that negative reputation of a salesman. I'm not going to say I'm perfect. Sleazy. Sleaziness, yeah. Sleazy, I'm yeah. not going to say I'm perfect. Uh, I, I've been through rules in, in, in the game a little bit. Okay. Um, but okay. but when it comes to making fake documents as far as check mm. stubs, dry, uh, I mean, just. Wait, so people do that? Social Security. Man, yeah. Oh, that people do that? Yeah. I, I didn't know that was a thing. Man, I, okay. man, I don't want to throw dude's name out there. No, he, no, please don't. He's yeah, a manager okay. and does it. I okay, mean, yeah, don't, yeah, please don't. Not at, not at University of Kia. No, 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 for wait, sure. Can we shout out University of Kia? Go buy yeah. your car at University of Kia. Yeah, we, for sure. I love University very of Kia. I, they're very kind, yes. But okay, but, you, but you've seen that take place oh, is what sure. we're saying. Okay, yeah. gotcha. And I'm, okay. I mean, I get it. People like, you're going to bend as much as you can to get a deal. Sure. But at the same time, at what point do you stop? Okay. I mean, because like I say, I'm not perfect. I've done illegal stuff in it. Sure. Um, but never nothing to the great extent. Okay, okay. Um, That's so just extra and over the top. Yes. Like making yeah. big documents. Man. Oh, my God. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> you, you'd be surprised in the car business what people I, Yeah, I, I hope they didn't have to make fake documents about me, Fernando. <laughs> <laughs> Fernando said you was 840. They didn't need it. I wasn't an 840. <laughs> I was not. I've always wanted to be in the eights, and I wasn't. <laughs> but my credit was pretty stellar. No, it was like seven something. But okay, yeah, at the time it was. <laughs> but okay, you know what? I, and I love that. You know, and I I want to commend you for for being honest about that too. You know what I mean? Be, I think it's fair to say that you keep it real. I got to. I'm not. <laughs> that perfect. sounds cliche. Yeah, yeah. but you do. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how important? And I, before we go, I want to ask you this. You know, you, we talk about your environment earlier, right? And so, how important is it for you to make these things happen for the people that you grew up in your environment? Man, when like people from Hillsborough, when they come and they like, they sit there and, and they're not able to get a car somewhere, and they come to me and they trust me, and I'm able to actually put them in a car, and they're sure. grateful for it. Mm-hmm. That's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. Uh, you have so many people that are ungrateful, the ones that think that I should have got a better car, yeah, uh, whatever it may be. But then you get them ones that are just grateful to get a car to get them sure. A to B, and that's the best feeling in the world. That's uh, phenomenal. And I've had a lot of those. So yeah. That, that's a, a very, very good feeling. That's so good. Well, you know what, Jeff? I'm so proud of you. And I, you know, it's so, it's so heartwarming meeting you. I'm, I'm glad that Thank we you. finally got to sit down, have a conversation. We only met each other at the gym. You saw me doing the bench presses. I seen Please that. Please tell you these bitches like how strong I am. Okay, don't play with me, all right? <laughs> I'm, deadly. I'm strong. I am strong. Yeah. I know I'm pussy. I can't fight, but I'm strong. But, okay. <laughs> you know, you're at University of Kia now, mm-hmm. right? And so... Obviously, it sounds like you really like it there. I love Give it. a shout-out to Fernando. I want to give a shout-out to Oz, too. Yeah, Oz Yeah, you know Oz. Yeah. I told Oz he needs to come Oz on the show. Oz is a character. Yeah, I love Oz. I love Oz and his, and his husband. They're fucking great. They're awesome. <laughs> they're he so fun. They're, they're, they're the few gay people that I actually really like. <laughs> gay people don't like me, right. but I really like them. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they like me, too. But, um, you know, we're going to University Kia. Okay, how can we reach out to you if somebody's watching this show right now? They got some shit credit, uh, but you know they feel. How, how can we reach out to you to do so? And how much can you help? My personal cell phone is two five four three four zero seven three four five. Uh, it's on me 24-7. It's my cell phone. If you need help, just give me a call. All right, great. If the gays start calling you, don't fucking call me. No, don't do that. Yeah, no, they're going to. You shouldn't have did that. All right. <laughs> okay, but we can meet you at University Kia. Yes. Sir. Okay, what's next for you in the business, Jeff? I, I'm happy with where I'm at. A yeah. lot of people are like, um, they want to move into desk manager or mm-hmm. finance or something like that. Man, I don't want those headaches. I'm yeah. happy with where I'm at, yeah, dealing sure. with my customers, uh, just helping my customers. Okay. Uh, sell my cars and go home. And that's it. That's it. You're, you're simple. You're yeah, a simple guy. for sure. And you got the family. Shout out to the kids. Yes, right. man. That's, oh, sir, that's my biggest blessing. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. You said yes, my, my kids. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. The episode's canceled. Shut down. No, <laughs> it's, it's okay, bro. It's okay. <laughs> so, you got the, so are you on the market, though? 
in the market. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with somebody. I'm oh, you with somebody? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Shout sure, out yeah. to, to whoever is. Okay, I'm going to say that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what, Jeff? Thank you again so much for coming on to the book. I'm so happy that you enjoyed the experience. At least, at the very least, I hope you did. Yeah, I did, I did. <laughs> and you know what? And, and I hope that we can, we should work out together sometime. We mentioned yeah. Hot Works. Yeah. Uh, what right. we're going to do, Ooh. bro, we'll do some hot works. And I, I, I want to lift with you, too, because you look real strong. You look big and strong, and I like lifting. Looks just fooled you. I'm not that strong. You're not? Okay, yeah. I, well, I'm stronger than you, so yeah. I got you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jeff, thank you so much again for coming on for to sure. the Public Affair. If you guys are looking for a car, don't be worried about the shit credit that you have. Jeff is going to do everything that he can to make yes. sure that he puts you in the car. Believe me, I bought a car from University K. I will just say this before we go. Bought a car from University K. I worked with Fernando Contreras. Um the, the, everybody, the whole staff there They're was amazing. super kind, amazing. I love the building. It's so beautiful. Um, everybody at University Kia, everybody from the desk managers, the finance manager, uh, my salesman, my personal salesman, they, they really were patient with me, and I had a very, very great experience. I would go back. I would go awesome. back to University Kia. I absolutely would. And um, you and Fernando are just going to have to fight over me. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Y'all just got the battle royale for me. All right. That's everybody, thank you again so much for watching this episode of The Public Affair. I've got more on the way. Thank you again so much for four years. Jeff, do you want to leave us with anything? Any shout outs or anything? Hey, call me if I can help you with a vehicle. That's hey. it, man. God's for good. A vehicle. No gay. Stop this. All right. <laughs> now, before we go, I definitely want you to stop and give a shout out just a few more of our sponsors of this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, to my boy Sid Rodriguez at Elite Barbershop on Hewitt Drive. Now, listen, Sid has been making sure for more than 205 episodes of the public affair that I'm looking uh, fresh faded super snazzy and DMable. <laughs> alright call now with the number on the screen and download the Squire app to book walk-ins are welcome as well he also has Marcus Guerrero Chris Rance Chris Reyes, Santos Cordova, David Rodriguez, Isaac Chavez, Clint Fletcher, Isai Reyes, Sam Ceballos, and Kyle Barry over there. You look at snack as I have for more than 200 and something episodes of The Public Affair. Elite Barbershop by Bar Sid has been the longest running sponsor of The Public Affair That's since awesome. the very beginning. Sid is a very, very advent supporter, and I truly appreciate that guy. Thank you so much. Of course, to my boy Junior Banda with Fatboy Michelada and Botana, who provides the best Michelada and Botana plates for yourself or for a party. Listen, he's also offering, offering the best aguachiles, ceviche, chamoy, candy, hot Cheeto, pickle plates, uh, and so much more. Oh my <laughs> God, and the chamoy candy, the gushes, it's the gushes for me. It's the peach rings for me. They're phenomenal. You can book him for an event. Call If you call him, he might even take you an order. Has he been to? That's my boy. Uh, don't you yeah, love him? I've known you. We he, used to work together. Junior fights my social media battles for me. Oh, it's the best thing ever. Boy. Yes, and make sure you guys don't forget. Get the best, not the rest. That boy, Michelle, but then I'm Junior Banda. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the Public Affair. And of course, to my girl, Anna Limones, for having her party backdrops and the car. Doesn't call for all party decor, including beautiful balloon props, giving an extra flair to your party or event. Um, she also offers a number of wooden backdrops as well, made by the husband, Fresh. Any backdrop that you want, she's got you. Any party decoration that you want, she's got you. She works overtime. She's phenomenal. She's professional. She's great. She's punctual. Make sure you guys give her a call. And she's affordable as well. Call the number on the screen. Sebra Espanol. Anna Limones, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the Public Affair. It's all of you guys thank you again so i just want to thank everybody for years i, I know awesome. i'm tired but i'm just grateful too i'm it's a blessing Huge you mentioned blessings. that you were blessed to be here that means a lot to me for sure because like Huge you guys blessings. i don't pay, please tell them i don't pay y'all <laughs> okay please tell them that there's no money exchange and you didn't pay me either but you know if you, you guys just give your time to just come on and you, you give me a chance to just right. do this you know what i mean so i'm thankful to all of my guests to rogue media network to all, everybody who has sponsored the public affair even one time truly grateful to all of you guys and i've got more on the way but don't forget always because nothing's ever going to change to keep it between us there you go. <laughs> that's it <laughs>